Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome everyone to another session of working with ArcGIS. Uh, in this session, we are going to uh, pick up from where we left. So we were working with vector data. Uh, we were in, we introduced ourselves to uh, polygon, uh, you know, type vector data, and we looked at districts, states, taluks uh, for India, and we sort of focused down to Uttar Pradesh. Um, we looked at the districts level data on your screen. You can you have a bit of a visual. Let me just zoom to layer for your uh, uh, you know uh, for your convenience. I will also remove labels things that we have done till now. And what we did previously was uh, you know we used this intersect tool uh, in the toolbox, the GeoPress processing toolbox under view in GeoProcessing. We used this tool under analysis overlay and intersect to uh, provide an intersection of a line uh, data that is the railroads data for India uh, downloaded from Diva GIS and uh, the districts level data for UP. And consequently, you know, we created this table, which is uh, called as UP districts, railroads, intersect table two, using this tool, uh, you know, on your screen, uh, if we go to catalog, you can see the location of these data, right? We talked about managing data using arc uh, catalog. And on arc map, we have a visual of the data. And on the table, in the table, we have this intersection of the rail lines as they pass through each district. We calculated the length of these, uh, you know, entities, you know, we actively added a field called length and we calculated geometry and calculated length of rail lines passing through each of them. And we figured that, you know, if we focused on Saharanpur, uh, we said, okay, select by attributes and I want to select uh, uh, by name two and I want uh, Saharanpur, right? So we did all that uh, in the previous, towards the end of previous, uh, okay. And you know, I have these 11 of 437 units selected. And if we sort of focus on what, where these selections are, well, they will happen to be on the, uh, you know, uh, 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 in the Saharanpur district. So this is going to be a Saharanpur district. If I open the attribute table, I say select by attributes and I say apply, you know, all the rail lines that are passing through Saharanpur are then selected as individual entities, right? So the FID Uttar Pradesh, which is 62, which refers to name two, the district name being Saharanpur, is intersected with the FID of the railroads, which provide us you know, individual unique railroad types. And, and then from these, we calculated the length. So if I were to sum the length of all the selected portions, the 11, uh, you know, selected, uh, 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 you know, uh, rows, then I will have the length of railroad lines in the Saharanpur district in UP. Well, that's pretty powerful, right? Um, we understand now that right, if we have if we are if we do data analysis if we can get these data in comma separated format which is the dot csv or dot excel uh, formats then we can do a lot of things on our traditional software like python on stata if you work in uh, you know if you're an economist or uh, you know you have experience working with stata or with spss or with r uh, you know, you can take these data there and then start manipulating them, right? So if I could sum uh, the length by district, unique districts, then I will get the exact length of railway lines in each of these 
uh, you know, districts. So my next query or my next quest is really to be able to uh, then, uh, you know, export these data into a .csv format, which I can then take to my statistical softwares and, you know, uh, start manipulating there, merging them with different data files, uh, which I may have different district level data for, let's say, nutrition, for some health outcomes, for some agricultural outcomes, from urban development outcomes. And I would, I might just want to merge the railroad length uh, by district. So I could construct the railroad le length using the visual maps and then export them as CSV and then merge them separately in a statistical software, right? So, so clearly something of interest to us right now is, uh, you know, convert these data. So what you could do under geoprocessing, you have this under favorites, you have this option of find tools, right? You, you may be, you may access this option from anywhere. And in find tools, I'm just going to say export table, right? So it's very convenient. The arc is really convenient. So I can now, I have this conversion tool called export table. It's going to be under conversion tools, you know, briefcase, that, that sign that we have, you know, if we go back, you know, if we, if we go back this conversion tools, this toolbox, if I open, I will have a, uh, you know, a uh, 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 conversion export table, uh, 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 you know, uh, okay, Excel to table, table to Excel. So I have many different functions that I can use, right? So I'm going to just use the find function because I guess it's very convenient. We can do it for different other things as well as we, we will see as we go. So we don't need to exactly know the location of each tool, we could simply find them, uh, you know, from the geoprocessing tab. Okay. So it says, okay, you know, what does this do? Let's go to the question mark. It says exports the rows of a table or table view to a table. Okay. So it says table inside, which is a object of arc GIS or arc map, which is typically a dot DVF file. And we want to convert it to a dot CSV or dot XLX, uh, you know, extension. So we say, okay, I want to, what's my input table? Well, it's UP district railroads intersect table. And my output table, I'm going to now uh, save it at a known location. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to go to folders. I want to go to my practice sessions and I'm, I want to, you know, save these data here. So let me do it here. So I'm going to say, uh, UP uh, districts, railroads uh, uh, intersect dot CSV. Okay, so I'm going to just provide this extension on my own. I'm going to say save. Okay, and I'll then say run. Okay, so it runs it. It says, okay, export table is completed. Fantastic. And it gives me a dot CSV on standalone tables. But I don't want the table to be inside ArcGIS, rather I want to be able to open it on an Excel, as an Excel, uh, you know, file. So I'll go to my Windows Explorer, I'll go to desktop, I'll go to my location of the data. And uh, okay, it's going to be under, okay, there we go. So UP districts, railroads, inter comes out as a Excel file right away. So if I double click it, there we go. It's an Excel file now. I can save it at any location. I can save it in different formats. You could save it as, as a text file. You could save it as a .csv file. You could take it to software like SAS, to R, to Stata, whatnot, right? To Python or whatever you are comfortable working with. So the entire data set has now been transported into this particular format, right? So I have my FID Uttar Pradesh which is the original ID for Saharanpur, it is 62. So wherever I see 62, it's all Saharanpur, right? And here we go, the name is Saharanpur here. And then I have my railroad ID right here, right? And then I have length. And we figured in the last class by cross-validating using the measure tool that these are in hundreds of kilometers, okay? So I'm just making the making sure that I have the unit right. I'm going to still save as, I'm going to say, okay, you know, I, I will say convert uh, arc converted UP 
district level railroads okay so i have my lengths now i can take it and i can i can do okay so i want to just save this file differently i can trans i can just import it in any system i can take it across systems so now i have a way to take a data set from an X, from a arc table to a an excel table something i'm very used to but what about the other way around okay so what if i were to begin with an excel file and i were to then convert it into a visual map and then analyze the data from there okay so let's let's go on to doing that as a next step okay so i'll go to go back to my uh, you know uh, uh, my uh, uh, you know arc my project sssc arc gis project i'm going to close this table i'm done with it so i'm going to remove it and i'm going to save my project okay i'm always going to save my project so that i can return to it whenever i like right as best practice then i will do zoom to layer so that things look you know uh, not so bizarre and now i'm going to show you a points data set right so the vector data occur as polygons at lines and points so we have seen polygons we have seen lines we have seen how they can both interact with each other now we will look at points for that i want you to pay attention to this india water resource information system database of the government of india okay so you can simply google india wris and it will give you the first thing it will give you is india wris portal on this portal you can navigate to groundwater data okay so you can go to let's say figure out for a given season any season you know in any year starting from 1993 till as recent as 2022 let's say we say 1998 uh, right and we say okay you know so there are four seasons january to march april to june july to september and october to december all these seasons are basically quarters in a year but they also map your monsoon seasons and the crop calendar of of india right so groundwater monitoring in india logically happens according to the monsoons and non monsoon seasons so of course july to september is the monsoon season april to june is pre monsoon october to december is post monsoon right and january to march is something like a post monsoon you know winter season okay so you can choose the season and you can download these data right you can submit a request you can download the data as an excel file okay so i've done that for you uh, you know beforehand so i'm going to uh, you know close this window and i'm going to show you a data set that you can uh, you know uh, get from there so this is a groundwater levels data uh, okay cancel cancel okay there's something wrong okay there we go so here is a groundwater level data this data is for the state of up okay separately downloaded id is a what is this id we will see in a minute well this id belongs to a well a well code so india's groundwater management agencies have or own uh, certain wells in different locations in the country from where they go in and they monitor groundwater levels right so they measure the level beneath the ground surface how far you know down the groundwater is where is the water head if the water head falls below that means depletion right and that means alarm right and if it so alarm if it depletes you know quite a bit let's say within a season if there is a dry season if there is less rainfall well you are going to have some some problems right these are the data that i was showing you through the lecture series as well right so you can now using these data go back and revisit all the different things that we talked about these data all of those functionalities that we talked we can do all of those on arcgis right uh, we won't have the time to do that through this particular module but once you are able to use these data play with these data analyze manipulate these data on uh, you know uh, 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 on arcgis you can uh, you know uh, do all those functions on your own okay so what do we have we have these well codes against each well i have a latitude and a longitude so i have my x y coordinate exact location on a map where that well is located okay and the data is in public domain 
Then I have the year which is uh, 1998. So this is the data for 1998 and it's post monsoon Kharif. Okay, Kharif is the season of cropping which happens, you know, uh, Kharif is during monsoons. So it's going to be the July, August, September. And post monsoon Kharif then would probably mean, you know, uh, either those three months or October, November, December. So it's one of those months which is after monsoon, probably just after the Kharif season. And what you see as values here are meters below ground level. So at this particular well in Bakhpur district, with the at this location in 1998, the waterhead was 8.8 .8 meters below the ground surface. Right. So this is now powerful data. I'm used to working with these data. Right. In a, it's a cross-sectional data set for all it's you know worth if uh, you know as, as as applied statisticians or applied econometricians or econometricians you know we know that this is a cross-sectional data set now how do we think of this as a spatial data set well there is a spatial delineation i have the lat long the question is how do i you know how do i now exploit this spatiality of the data okay that's where arcgis will come into picture okay so we are going to go back to our software we are going to the soft folders, okay? So I have my, uh, you know, uh, uh, my folder that I had added previously. And in that folder, I have this point vector data and I have my uh, uh, groundwater XLX. So I'm going to just drag it. I'm going to uh, just double click it and hope that this will open in my table. It seems it won't. So I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to go into map. I'm going to click on add data. I'm going to go to my folders. Okay, so vector, then I have my XLX file. Okay, so this says groundwater level 1988. It's a typo, it should be 1998. And this has a dollar sign, so this should be sheet name. So let's go back to our Excel file and see for sure if we have uh, that name. So we have groundwater level. So it uh, doesn't say that, so let's see. Um, okay, one second, I have a little snag here, so groundwater level, okay, and groundwater level, okay. So I have, I'll go back and I'll just try and import this sheet, here we go, let me open this data set, groundwater level 1988, it should be 1998, so you know by the way I can simply correct the typo. Okay, I'm done. Now I can open it so that everything remains correct. Okay, perfect. So I have my ID, I have my state, I have my district, my well code, and my lat long and year 1998 post monsoon Kharif 8.8. Okay, so here is my Excel sheet and I've added this data using this tool of called add data. Okay, I wasn't able to drag this data directly from here just like I was able to do previously, remember? Like, uh, you know, if you recall from previous, uh, you know, sessions, you know, when we used, uh, when we had a shape file, we could simply drag it from the catalog to the map uh, window and it would simply just be, you know, added to my content pane, and I could visualize the data. Here, it, that didn't work. So I had to manually add data from here. I could click here, you know, I will, it'll take me to that folder where I've kept the data and then I can, you know, uh, uh, from there, I can simply, uh, you know, uh, uh, down, you know, import this data. I can import the XLX file, that is the Excel format, or the CSV file, it doesn't matter, okay? All right. So the quest, the quest that I have is, I want to now, you know, I will, I will remove all the maps, and the quest is that I want to now visualize these data spatially, okay? So for, for that, we go to the data set, we right click, we say display XY data, we click on display XY data. So it gives me a new window. It says input table is groundwater level 1998, perfect. Output feature class, it's asking me where to put a feature class. I'm going to give it a location. I'm going to say, okay, you know, give it to me right here. So I want a groundwater level 1988 oh sorry 1998 uh, uh, so I'm saying Excel 
to shape or feature right dot shp because that's the format i like and then x field and y field so x is longitude and y is latitude okay you can imagine i mean latitudes are vertical uh, you know lines on the earth sphere so if the latitudes are changing we are going along the y axis and longitudes when they change we are actually going around the x axis so y is latitude z we do not have a z field right why because we don't have a height we don't we, our data is 2d it's not 3d right so uh, with regards to location spatial domain our data is 2d we have two coordinates right we don't have three coordinates okay very very important coordinate system it is wgs 1984 that is very critical because remember all my vector files are wgs 1984 so if i am to actually overlay them on a map and, and make sure that if i see a well location at a given sort of with a with some reference of a district it's indeed in that district i need the exact same projection system so that's great it has already uh, you know provided me the the projection system that i like so i'm going to say okay there we go okay so here on this screen on your screen what you see is a groundwater level data set for 1998 as a ship file right i can now you know uh, right click and open attribute table i will the same attribute table as earlier opens right uh, there are 1309 units in this attribute table that means there are 1309 unique wells distributed across the uttar pradesh state right and not only the shape resembles up but if i actually now check up state vector file see what happens is that i'm actually able to find the envelope of these wells now this is phenomenal i can go from a attribute table in arc to an excel file and i can start from an excel file and come to arc and do all the manipulations i like okay all right so what else can i do okay so one thing is i can probably uh, look at the properties of these data well let's look at the spatial reference well wgs 1984 i have i specified the gcs right so it is the same as i like the angular unit is in degrees uh, and so on and so forth right so there are all these details now i can also view which district has which data okay so i can go and uh, check the districts file here we go we can see that some districts have much higher density of monitoring relative to some northern districts maybe these are hilly regions remote areas you know it's not possible to put wells or monitor them it may be very costly and hence you may have a lower density of wells in those regions right it could be a research question to ask why some districts are sampled more aggressively than others right i mean you might want to figure out that's that's a good place to start in terms of analyzing the data very interestingly the western uh, you know districts which are all you know sort of uh, uh, you know that are counted as ncr so if i were to label these data right uh, these districts of ghaziabad the district called gautam buddh nagar that is noida you know these are part of the national capital territory bagpat and often we are uh, come across uh, you know popular press about the depletion problem in these districts and yet what we see is that they are not so densely you know uh, monitored you know there are uh, let's say three wells in gautam buddh nagar and three wells in ghaziabad right but by contrast meerut has many more wells muzaffar nagar has many more wells and so does bijnor uh, and hapur and bulandshehar and so on and so forth and for that matter mathura right so so these are some interesting things these are starting points in a research uh, you know uh, journey right now i might want to figure out okay you know can i actually visualize the water levels across districts well let's try let's remove the labels because we don't want to clutter we go back to our you know point data and we say symbology okay 
Now, under symbology, I will say, okay, you know what? I want to look at proportional symbols. I want to look at proportional symbols and I want to look at the field which is post monsoon Kharif. Well, I don't see it here. Okay, so ArcGIS is not reading it. So for that, I will go and I will now uh, open my attribute table. I will add a new field. I will call the field uh, groundwater 1998 meters or let's say MET uh, or just M and I uh, like to have these things. Uh, okay, so I'm done with that. I would like to have the data type as double and I will just say I'm done. So it'll say, do you want to save this change? I'll say, yes, I want to save this change. Perfect. So I have my new field, groundwater 1998 meters, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say calculate field, not calculate geometry, calculate field. Okay, I go there, I say groundwater 1998 meter, I want this to be equal to post monsoon. And I'll say apply, it'll give me, it'll do it, it has done calculations, right? So I can see the values are similar, but it has given me a lot of warnings. And if you pay attention, the warnings are where the post monsoon level was NA. And it doesn't know what NA is. NA is a text string. So it converts it to zeros. Okay, so this is a caveat. So you have to be very careful about this caveat, right? Okay, so apply, okay. Okay, so we have a new stream now. Let's, let's again go back to symbology. There it is catching the field groundwater 1998 meter. I'm going to use it. Wonderfully, it gives me a visual, uh, you know, understanding of groundwater status in 1998 across districts. Well, it does it in four classes or four or let's say five classes, which go from one meter till 10 meter and above, right? So these are just uh, less than or equal to one meter, one to 2.5, uh, 2.5 to 5, 5 to 7.5, greater than 5, 10. So a larger circle resembles a worsening groundwater depletion problem. Okay, so larger circles are a reflection of, uh, you know, greater problem. So I can play with the template. So, you know, minimum size, I don't want the sizes to be so large. So I'm going to say minimum size is 1 and maximum I want the size to be 40. Okay. Uh, what that does is it makes my graph look much clearer, right? My visualization becomes clearer. So I'm done with symbology, but something I learn by this symbology is that I have some depletion problem in 1998 uh, in the bordering districts of NCR, but not so much, maybe on the southern side. Um, and the depletion problem was certainly higher in the southern UP belt, that is south of the Ganges River than in the north. So I see no real depletion problem happening in the north, whereas south was already uh, stressed so far as groundwater resource was concerned. And this is 1998, right? So I'm talking about about 25 years ago, right? Okay. Um, all right, so I have visualized, I've done some symbology, I've visualized this data. Now I may have a query that I want to learn about average groundwater level inside a particular district or across all districts. So what do I do? Well, I transport my knowledge from how I intersected the line feature with the polygon feature. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go to geoprocessing. I'll say, show me geoprocessing, go to analysis, overlay and intersect. What are my input features? Well, my first input feature is UP districts. Okay. My second input features is the groundwater levels. Okay, I'm going to rank one and two, just like I did previously. I'm going to give the address of my output feature class and I'm going to say UP districts, groundwater 1998, post monsoon, so PM, intersect dot shape. Yes, I want to join all attributes. I want the if output to be same as input, right? I actually want it to be a polygon. So let's see if it does it. It won't do it because it is only giving me two options here. What if I were to change ranks? I'm going to make it two, 
make it one. Let's see if it allows me to save these things as a polygon. It doesn't. So I'm just keep, keep my ranks. My districts is, are my primary query. I want to understand the groundwater situation within a district. So I want to take an average or I want, might want to know standard deviation of groundwater, groundwater levels in a district. I might want to know the median level in a district. So I basically want to sort of some, do some kind of a spatial join between the district and the, you know, uh, 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 groundwater file. I know that, you know, wells are also identified by district, so I could directly do it in the Excel sheet. But I could also do it, you know, if, if I did not have that identifier in the groundwater data, I could still use the lat long information and then join it to the districts, okay? You could do it to taluks, right? So the groundwater, original groundwater file does not identify which well falls in which taluk. Well, by intersecting the data, you could actually join the taluks to the groundwater wells, individual groundwater wells. Actually, you should do that as a homework, right? Okay, so I'm just going to say run. It's going to run it and it has run it. Fantastic. So I'm going to open the attribute table and it's going to now show me for Sonbhadra, right? I'm going to say select by attributes, select a field I want name two. And now I will look at, let's, let me look at something like a Gautam Buddhanagar. Okay. So I have these three wells in Gautam Buddhanagar. Fantastic. I can see that they are now selected. So I'm going to now, uh, you know, only work with these. And I'm going to see where are they selected on my data. Okay. There you go, there you go. All right, all right, all right. All right, Gorakhpur, Amethi, Rai Bareli, Amethi, Unnao, Azamgarh, Balia, okay, Ghazipur, yes, okay. Okay, uh, for some reason I'm not able to uh, okay, wait a second. Let me see if I can. Okay, so for some reason, I'm not able to find the selections in this. I'm just uh, thinking whether uh, they may be in another attribute table. Okay, cool. So whatever. But the thing is, I could just take an average of the levels at these three wells. I could take, I could calculate the standard deviation from these three wells. Of course, it's a small sample metric, but it is what it is. Right? Okay. So now, just like earlier, I could export these data, this table to Excel. So for that, you can actually fall back to what we did with the railroads data just five minutes ago. Right? We could take these files and then merge them with some other files, auxiliary Excel files. We could do these things at state level. We could do these things at taluk levels. And if you have a village shape file, you could do them at village shape, you know, levels. Okay, so you understand how we can sort of manipulate the data accordingly. Okay, so that's about it. We have seen vector data of three types. We have seen how to manipulate them, how to store those data and, and how to visualize those data, use symbologies to create, you know, you know, informative maps, right, publication ready maps really. And uh, finally, you know, uh, now is the time to look at some raster data. Right, so something, another data type that we have worked with and see if we can now sort of, you know, find ways to not only visualize raster data, uh, manipulate them, but also sort of read them into polygons like districts uh, or, uh, you know, uh, something around an outer ring of a well, right? I could just draw an outer ring of a well and read those data in the districts and then, you know, export tables into Excel and, and do some manipulation, some analysis. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. That's about it for session four. We'll do a short session on raster data uh, uh, shortly later. See you then. Thank you. Mm -hmm.